out an Oscar. And that's Ki Hu Kwan capping his acceptance speech for Best Supporting Actor Oscars. He's one of the performers from last night's big winner at the Academy Awards. Best Picture, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. You're going to hear that name a bunch here mm -hmm. in the next couple minutes. Last night's show saw veteran screen performers picking up the Golden Statuette. Joining us this morning is Thomas Manning, a member of the North Carolina Film Critics Association, also hosting a TV radio show called Meet Me at the Movies. Thomas, nice to have you with us this morning. Good Monday, man. Hey, always a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me back. All right, so we're going to kind of break down what, what you saw last night. But overall, I mean, what was the feeling of the whole ceremony like? How did you feel about it? I thought generally everything ran very smoothly. There were no major distractions or no gimmicks within the ceremony itself that took away the focus from the filmmakers and from the artists, which should be the center focus at any of these award ceremonies. And uh, so I was just very pleased overall that we didn't have any major incidents. And um, I think that was definitely a step up from last year. Uh, many people would agree on that front. Yeah, I think everybody's happy. There was no distractions or anything on stage that happened this year. And as Harper said, you, people are going to be hearing the name Everything Everywhere All at Once a lot because, I mean, they dominated last night. Best Actress, uh, Best Picture, Best Director. I mean, they, 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 they did it all. Absolutely. And actually, statistically, even prior to last night, Everything Everywhere All at Once was the most awarded film of all time, uh, taking into account major critics associations and the various nationally recognized guilds and other award ceremonies. Uh, and then it won seven more, uh, seven Oscars last night, including Best Picture. Uh, and I think this represents a really interesting uh, you know, path forward for the film industry, because prior to to this year uh, within the past couple of years the previous best picture winners we had nomadland and then coda which were very small in scale very intimate uh but this was a film that examines the eternal possibilities of the multiverse and of all sorts of multiversal escapades um and in terms of best picture winners i really don't think that there's a precedent for a film this eccentric and this out of the box winning the top prize and uh, i just think that's it's really special to see uh, how this is going to vault, um, you know, creativity for other filmmakers moving forward. Speaking of creativity and just impressiveness, A24 is the indie studio uh, that ended up walking away with, gosh, a hundred million dollars in box office uh, money. Not only was it with uh, everywhere, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once, but also the whale. Uh, what does this say about smaller uh, production companies? compared to MGM and Columbia and Sony Pictures and some of these these bigger movie houses? Yeah, I think just many more people are gravitating toward these stories that are touching people on a very personal level. And uh, just a few years ago, uh, we had Parasite, the one best picture, and that was from Neon uh, Productions, uh, another smaller indie studio. And something that Bong Joon-ho, the director of Parasite, said during his Oscar speech that I think resonates on that level. Um, he said something to the effect of the most creative is the most personal. And um, I believe that that's something that we've seen, uh, we've seen on display with everything everywhere all at once. It's an extremely personal story for the filmmakers, uh, for Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner and everyone involved. Uh, it's, it's ultimately a family story in the most creative package that you've probably ever seen a family story for. And we saw the pictures there, Brendan Fraser, I mean, winning last night, a huge win for him after being pretty much gone from yeah. the public eye for a long time for his role in the whale there. How much of a feel good story is that for him? Right, right. He's such a likable personality and he's so easy to root for. And a few years back, he went through an extremely difficult time of you know, physical, mental and emotional health issues. And he stepped away from acting for a period. And now he comes back and wins an Oscar, and uh, if you'd asked me going into it, I actually would have predicted Austin Butler to win for Elvis, mm -hmm. uh, but seeing Brendan come in, uh, kind of, I guess that was the big surprise of the night, and uh, whoever won, I would have been totally pleased with, but like I said, Brendan is just, his personality is someone that you just kind of can't help but uh, fall in love with. 
What did you think of uh, Jimmy Kimmel being the host last night? This is his, I think, third or fourth time to do this. How, how do you feel like he transitioned based on, you know, what took place last year with the slap from Will Smith? How, how did you feel like he hosted this year? I thought he did exactly what he needed to do. He didn't get in the way of uh, the focus of, you know, the artists. And uh, he... His opening monologue was delivered pretty well. Obviously, not every joke is going to land, but I thought there were more hits than misses. And for the rest of the ceremony, he managed to avoid being a distraction, uh, which was really all he needed to do. He just uh, needed to make sure that things uh, fell into place as they should, but he didn't need to get in the way and become too gimmicky or uh, draw too much attention to himself. So I, generally, I was quite pleased with how he handled things. Thomas, I know a lot of people don't always have the time to go out and see these films before they hit award season there. I know you have time to, to, to view them all because this is what you do. So give somebody a film, and I'm not going to let you off easy. You can't pick everything everywhere all at once. So give somebody a film that won last night that you want people to go out and see and say, hey, this is going to be worth your time. Okay, so I'm going to say the film RRR, uh, which is uh, an Indian film, and there was a live performance of the song Natu Natu from last night, and that won for Best Original Song. And uh, I heard reactions from some other people who hadn't seen the movie but saw the musical number performance and were just blown away. By I uh, we may we may have lost uh, Thomas. I don't know if Thomas is still there, but he was saying R R R. There, there you are. All right. So does that stand for something? You said it's Indian. Is it a is it a subtitle film? Uh, yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, okay. R R R is an uh, acronym for um, Rise, Re Re Rise, Roar, and Revolt. Uh, quite the mouthful there. But uh, there's there, basically there's a lot more where that came from. If you watch the musical number uh, Natu Natu, and uh, one of the most creative action movies I've seen in a long time. Okay. Man, I got some uh, I got some movie watching, <laughs> and uh, I know a lot of people like to stream movies, which is, seems to be where things are going these days. So, Thomas Manning, thanks for your time, for breaking it all down. Appreciate it. What a great night of the Oscars, and we look forward to next year's. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you.